Hi, Pedro here. This is an N64. And this is an N64. The difference? I got this one for Christmas many years ago. This I just got off eBay and it's been sitting in someone's garage for God knows how many years collecting dust. So with this little guy, I've upgraded it with the retro gem a little while ago and it was great. But unfortunately, I kind of messed it up, which I showed you guys in a video not too long ago. So in comes this guy. I adopted him. It's great. However, he ain't doing so good. He's a little sick. He's got no video, he's got no sound, he's got no nothing. So I'm gonna refurbish him, I'm gonna transplant the retro gem onto this little guy and get him back up to speed. So as part of the refurbishing, I'm gonna do a complete capacitor recap on this guy. Then I'm gonna give it a new internal power supply, obviously give it the retro gem, and see what else I can do with it. And if not now, what am I gonna do with it later? No teardowns. Take plenty of pictures of the board to make sure you get the orientation and values of the capacitors before getting started. Replacing capacitors is super easy. We'll use our soldering iron and small pliers. All it takes is a light kiss from the iron and lightly lifting the capacitors. Take your time to let the heat do its thing and don't use twisting or tearing motions when lifting the component. It's obvious that this unit was previously opened and an attempt to do a recap was done as not all the OEM caps were present. It's worth mentioning that this was a failure because not only was one pad completely ripped off, but several pads were lifted off. Two of the lifted pads remained aloft while some had evidence that they were patched with super glue. Never use super glue with electronic circuits. It can easily cause shorts. I put together the kit for the components from AliExpress just to have more caps in case I need more. You can easily get a capacitor replacement kit from console5.com. I've used their kit for my other N64 and it fit the build perfectly. The repair I'm most concerned about is the rip pad for C128. With a little patience, damage like this is completely avoidable and you won't need to worry about damaging a board. Luckily, the schematic for the N64 is available which I'll have linked in the description. With the caps off, it's time to give this board a desperately needed IPA bath. I did this three times before I was satisfied with the results. There was still some junk left over, but that will be taken care of later. Let me show you how to properly address lifted pads. Lightly dab a little acrylic at the end of where the lift is right along the edge. 
careful not to add too much or have it spill towards the pad center. Clean any mess with IPA and try again. Carry it under UV light for one minute and test it. Pads are nicely secured. It's on the caps is easier than taking them off. Tin both pads with some solder, but don't blob it. Align the capacitor with your tweezers and use a soldering iron on the pad to melt the solder to make the weld. When aligning, center the cap to the center space separating the two pads for the legs to avoid shorting, taking note of the polarity alignment. You'll see that I'm using the OEM 68 microfarad and some 100 microfarad caps where the 68 microfarad ones go. This is because a supplier of the caps sent me the wrong ones. Talk to them, they just don't have the caps even though they have the listing active. I've since ordered caps from another supplier and the first supplier took my advice to take down that listing. I'll have to do these ones again another day. Don't worry about any that I installed backwards or the one that I missed as I fixed those off camera before any testing took place. This is why we take pictures before removing anything. Time for the problem child. Luckily, there's a via we can use to do the repair. While it connects to pin 2 on the PIF chip, I'm sticking to how it is connected as designed in its schematic. Let's do it. That is a beautiful repair right there. Bath time! Yes, it's out of recording order, but you're not paying attention. And if you are, then prove it in the comments. Foiled by C140. 
Big test time. It works, but there's no audio. Sparing you a lot of time and detail, all testing for short to long caps are negative. Tests for continuity are excellent. Voltages across capacitors are what they're expected to be, and voltages supplying U1 and U2 are solid. U2 may be bad, though pins 7 and 8 have voltages off them suggesting a signal. So I decided to remove and bypass U2. I managed to get the little guy off, connect pin 3 to pin 7, connect pin 12 to pin 8, and nothing changed. U2 is an audio amp, and it seems like it's doing its thing just fine. But that would mean that U1 is the problem. Feeds to pin 3 and 12 on U2 come from U1, which is a DAC that became obsolete as of March 2023. While I found a mod that would replace U2, I wanted to find another BU9480F8159 DAC to have analog sound available through the multi out port. I reinstalled U2 and will have to wait for a replacement U1 at some point. Because I want to make this a little special, one mod will be an internal USB C power supply. We need to take off the power port, and I did a lot with some flux, some solder wick, and my iron. I eventually got a desoldering iron to finish the job, so I don't end up accidentally damaging the Vs. Again, just taking my time to let the heat travel through the thick leads to do the work. The old power port is removed and in perfect condition. We attach this 3 lead connector that I put together to the board, as this power supply is removable. It's so tiny! I'm feeling the Vs a bit so we have more service to attach to. I'm not feeding the cable through because the power supply will sit directly on top of the board. Get black attached to any ground via, green to either 3.3 volt via, and red to the only 12 volt via. I'll have links to the parts used, SDL, as well as a link to the USB power supply vid I made previously as a simple guide in the description below. The SDL is free for non-commercial use only. I already did a RetroGem install vid for the N64, so I'll show my fine technique as it made the installation a breeze. Clean everything with IPA beforehand, and lay some flux across the pins. I'm going to use this IC as an example as the RetroGem is already installed with a passing health check. Using a fine tip on your iron, heat the pad where it meets the pin and kiss the point with a little solder. A little tiny peck is what I'm aiming for. We want to add a little more solder to the area. With the flex aligned and secured with some Capcom tape, use your tweezers to hold it down and heat the top of the pads on the flex using only a little pressure as you do this. Introduce a little solder as you go. A tiny blip will do. Time to test the Roger Gem after an easy transplant. Let it do its thing. Do a health check. One last start just because. Clearly got video. But we have sound. A smashing success. It's time to reassemble the unit. I've done this so many times that I'm running on autopilot. Not done with round 2 of COVID, so my brain forgot a few things during the reassembly, which I fix afterwards. Notice a new cartridge slot, salvage from another console from eBay, and it's in perfect condition. The other one had corrosion on the shield, but the pins were still in good condition. If I'm doing a restoration, I'm doing it right. Time for a dry fit for the new power supply. 
explore the shield where I need to take off some material. And ta-da! It's a perfect fit. What's more is that there is a perfect amount of clearance for the screw that goes underneath it. I'll probably do a version 2 of this print to include the little wings to secure to the case. See, I forgot the shroud. Connect the PSU to the board. A little tuck. And everything for this unit is done for now. Slap the rest of the case together and reward it with a memory expanded jumper pack for being a trooper. This is the first time I've gone to eBay to purchase a unit with the intention of refurbishing it. While I'm overall really satisfied with how everything went, I am a little disappointed that I couldn't restore the analog audio. To do that, I'm gonna have to get another N64, make sure that it has no chance of surviving, and do a transplant. What's next for this unit is gonna be a new shell. I wanna get a new shell for it. I'm gonna change out the LED. I want to do the region free card mod and probably do the RGB mod for it too. If I find myself with the opportunity to fix the analog audio out, I will do that. I would love that. And I have a 100% functioning modern unit. It would be beautiful. Now, while I've been doing a lot of posts about this, I've also been eyeing the Dreamcast a bit. And I'm pretty interested in that. So I might do something about it. But I'm not going to say anything about it other than I've been looking at it. Let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about buying stuff off eBay and refurbishing it? Is it a good use of your time and money? Is it not? My results came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Who knows? Maybe we'll make a series out of this. You let me know what you think. So, take care. Bye-bye.